Okay, so let's uh, let's make a stock model for this. We're going to go a little different route here. We're not going to use the stock setup. So let's go to levels. We'll do a new level, and we'll call this uh, stock um, earn fill holes. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to go into surfaces where I'm at now. So surfaces, and we're going to go to fill holes. We're just going to cap these off quick. So we'll go to fill holes. Click the surface, click near the edge of the hole. Click the surface, edge of the hole. Now, look, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that they're actually, you know, just 2D surface. Just fill the holes on the back side. All right, and we'll hit green check. Um, we're good there. So now what I want to do is go to tool paths. And I renamed the first tool path group Operation 1. Uh, I'm going to go to tool paths now. Go to stock model. Once we're in stock model, we're going to go to stock definition. We're going to name this stock. All right. Stock plane will be top. We're going to go to model and we'll hit the arrow and we will select not only the model itself, but all the surfaces. And if you click on it three times, it should select everything, but either way. We'll hit end selection. I'm going to make this model a different color, just call it red. Okay. And some people turn it to glass, so it's a little bit transparent. That's fine. Um, we'll work with that. That's what we need to do. There is no source operations. We're just doing an initial stock model, so we'll hit green check. And you'll see our stock. All right. And you could toggle on or off here. So it's up to you right now if you want to create a P mesh and put it into a new level. It's probably not a bad idea. Um, so let's take a look here. We'll do a new level and we'll call this stock model. All right. And when we get into stock model, we can do convert to P mesh. This is active. If we go convert to P mesh, you'll see we have one entity now. And we can toggle that on or off. We right click, make the first one active, and turn the toolpath off. So now we can use this here to turn a stock model reference on or off. Uh, it's sort of relevant. Uh, it's good for multiple operations. It's good to have that model to reference because you really can't. You can reference this in some types of toolpaths, but not all. See how it's a little different? So just leave it for now. I kind of leave that blank. Um, this is our stock. Now, we really don't necessarily need the stock on for now, so we'll just toggle it off. Okay, and we'll also toggle fill holes off because we don't need that right now. All right, we can leave our work coordinate system in the middle too, if that's fine. Um, you could put it up on top here. It's up to you. The main focus here is the thread milling and helix bore. Uh, the rest of it um, is sort of irrelevant for now. I'm trying to keep the video as short as possible. So there's some new options there. So uh, we this is a little different. Uh, stock model first instead of last. Um, you could also put stock model alone, so it's easier to, you know, control. Um, there is, you know, what you can do now is instead of clicking create a new toolpath group here, um, I end up, if I'm doing it this method or if I'm doing multiple work offsets um, on the same part um, or even different parts, it doesn't matter. There's different me methods here to control the tree. Um, it's up to you. One method, uh, I, you know, a lot of times I'll show people just to make this tree bigger here, starting operation one, you see the tree line here. That's fine. Um, but now I'm going to show you something a little different. I'll right click here and do groups, do new toolpath group. And you'll see how it changes here. So now if I minimize that, this can still be used. So you, we could rename operation one to something like um, stock. And then we could rename toolpath group one, and we can call this, um, you know, helix bore. And the nice thing is, is that when we start creating here, you can minimize these and open them separately. All right. And, and we'll take a look at that. And again, it's not mandatory. This is all organization. It's user preference. Um, it helps. This helps when you have to post each operation separately or need to control it separately. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, but I just wanted to show you something a little different. All right. So we started with Helix Bore. We got the stock model done. I'll pause here quickly just to give you a, spot, a place to pause to catch up and uh, get to this uh, position with your level set up properly. Uh, we could renumber that to three if you like. It's irrelevant. It's up to you. And uh, we'll come back. All right, so let's work on uh, creating these holes using helix bore. What that is is taking an end mill and helixing in pretty slowly, just working its way in, helixing all the way down until you have a hole. Um, it's a pretty accurate way to do things. It's just a different type of tool path, uh, something to help um, get, expose you to more options here. I use Helix Bore a lot when I want to control hole location um, with, you know, without having to actually bore the hole. Is it like boring? Not really. You're still circular interpolating all the way down, um, but 
it, you know, it's it's still better than drilling you know, um, a hole. So uh, this feature and this feature are both um, created for a three-quarter ten thread class two. Um, so they are, you know, specific sizes. Now, depending on what you want to do, this I shot for the tap drill size. It's in the middle of the tolerance uh, on the minor diameter for that. All right. The major here, this one is at 748, if I remember correctly, and that's the top side, top end of the tolerance. That's fine. Um, this hole is whatever. I just put it in there for extra. So you're going to have two thread mill, uh, two helix board holes, one thread milled internal, one thread milled external. All right. So let's do a helix board first. So that's in the drilling operations. So what I want you to do is select this circle and this circle, okay? And we'll hit green check. Now we can do, uh, I'm not gonna worry about tool for now. We're gonna get into helix bore first. And you'll see what it's doing. We'll go into tool next. Let's go into select library tool. Now that, that hole is at um, around, it's like 656 is a smaller one. If you ever get confused on that, just go to Toolpath Type and look over at Arc Geometry, and you can just look back over here. So we have 656 and one inch. So half inch uh, will work for this. All right, and it'll be good because we'll see the toolpath changes. So we'll go to Tool, we'll go to Select Library Tool, go to the filter, just get a flat half inch end mill. All right, and that's fine. And we did not do the tools in order, so you can go ahead and override that right now. Make sure all of them are changed. And the speeds and feeds we can update. We'll do a surface feed of, let's say, um, you know, 800. And we'll do a chip load per tooth at 3,000. All right. We'll call this uh, comment, this would be helix bore. And um, it's up to you if you want to do force tool change. That will um, force tool change between your operations. It's up to you. Um, so if you're using two different tool paths with the same tool, it'll it'll allow the MO1 to occur between. Um, it's not going to make a difference for this operation uh, alone, but it could um, later on. Just a force tool change can be useful. Um, do you need it? No, but it is kind of nice. Uh, the plunge feeder will also change. Um, we'll just end up going 25 inches per minute. That's fine for now. Uh, we're not going to worry about holder information. We will go to stock. We Now, this is one of those operations. You could use stock, and that would reference uh, the stock model. Um, or stock setup. We're not. Okay, uh, we're not going to worry about that. We'll go to cup parameters, and we're going to use wear comp. All right. And you got to be careful because the way we're, when we get into actually finishing this with comp compensation, you can't really use uh, control here because the lead in amount. So you have to use wear. You could override the diameter geometry if they're the same. You got to be careful. All right. Uh, diameter for simulations are relevant. We're going to leave nothing on this. We're going to rough and finish with the same tool. And we're going to start at center, end at center. And we'll, we could do a perpendicular entry, and we could do a little bit of overlap. 10,000 is fine. All right. Um, this is all good. We'll go to rough and finish. Now, this is the pitch of the helix going down, so every revolution. I end up using a pretty low uh, helix. Uh, we're moving right along. You could do, you know, like a 10 thou helix. It could be less, could be more. you got to get a feel for that. How many rough passes you want. The feed rate at final depth. Okay, things like that. You can go to finish and do the finish operation for this. Um, I don't really worry about that uh, for this one. You could helix up for a finish pass. Uh, you could do a circle. It's up to you. Um, you don't even really necessarily need a finish pass with this. It's up to you. Um, you can go in and just do a contour to finish this if you wanted to. Uh, I don't. Um, it totally depends on what tolerance you need to hold, uh, things like that. So we're going to turn uh, finish off, and we'll leave that there. Uh, feed rate at final depth. Now, again, this final depth is should be a circle, if I remember right. So that's why that's um, updated. Uh, and you will have cutter comp for that. So the finish pass, it's up to you. Um, it's totally up to you on some of these. It depends on the situation. There's no tool access control issues here. Linking parameters uh, do affect here. Top of stock is zero. Um, we will do clearance, and we'll do two inches, and we'll go absolute for that. Um, what else we got here? Uh, we'll go into depth. So we'll do depth here, and we'll go that far down, one inch. We will change this to 1.06 uh, to make sure that is passed a little bit. Uh, planes, everything else should be okay. Uh, it's up to you if you want to turn coolant on. 
Um, and let's just see what this does. All right, and we'll hit green check. And you'll see the Helix Mill tool paths and what occurs. We'll zoom in a little bit, and you'll see it helixing in. Okay, helix in and helix out. And again, it's up to you. Comp should be on the entire time. We will double check that. Um, we can watch this run now. I'm just going to run it in back plot, um, and we'll see what occurs. You'll see it going in, helixing on its way in. And it's a little bit bigger. You can add finished passes. You can do this and that, but I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to keep the video as short as possible. I'm um, just exposing you to this tool path. So that's good. Uh, I'm just going to post this quick and let's take a look at what we got. You'll see our comp here and then all the helixing all the way down. Okay. So the comp is on the whole time. So you do have control on the diameter. And I have found uh, for the most part that it's fairly accurate. The whole finishes come up pretty good as long as the cutter, you're not really, again, in aluminum or, you know, even steel, you're not loading the cutter a lot. You're just working your way in, going around. Um, if you want to go ahead and do a finish pass, you can in there. Um, if not, uh, you can do a separate contour pass with a separate cutter. Um, that's what usually what I do. If, if, if this is a roughing helix bore, I'm not going to rough and finish with the same cutter. I will just go ahead and go to contour, plunge in, and you know, use contour, a nice simple tool path to do that. Um, you could even use circle mill at that point to do that. Uh, a lot of options there to finish a whole diameter, which was covered in Mastercam, uh, the Mastercam MFTS 223. So I just want to expose you to Helix Bore and what it does. All right. And um, not really, you know, again, just focus on Helix Bore. So I'm going to pause here. You can go ahead and finish those Helix Bore operations. You know, if we see, if we go to the front view, we should be down past. That's perfect. And again, you can get in here and you can tweak these settings to whatever situation you need. Okay. That's totally up to you. It depends on the material. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. All right. So uh, we'll come back here and we'll take a look into thread milling.